Hello, hello. As promised, I uh, am going to do a reading. I might do three in a row because there are three stories in my new book. And um, I'm going to start with an excerpt from the first story. Uh, a little, I'll tell you a little about the situation. Uh, the first story is written in the I person and it is supposed to be written by somebody um, who hasn't got any experience in writing. Uh, there are going to be things that don't make sense because it's taken from the middle of the story, So, but don't, don't worry if you want to know, if you want to let them make sense. You're just going to have to buy my book and read it. So, here we go. Shanika slept at my home that night. She pleaded with her parents and mine not being able to tell them the reason. After Peter Hill had invaded her home and mine, safety was a relative concept. We would soon find out. He wasn't the only threat. It was half past eight when we sat at the table having breakfast. We were exceptionally quiet. My parents noticed there was something wrong with us. What to tell them though? We're being hunted by a guy with superpowers? Yeah. They were going to believe that. The doorbell rang. I'll go and see what's up, my father said. I took a bite from my cheese sandwich. Shanika took a sip from her milk. We heard voices coming from the front reception room. Confused, we frowned at each other. Officers Law and Sanford came in. The latter with a condescending, victorious expression. Luther was a lot more hesitant, not to mention nervous. Come on, Officer Law, Sanford spurred him on. Do your duty. We glanced at each other, wondering what was going on. William Parker and Shanika Jones, Luther's voice trembled. You are under arrest. What? I exclaimed. That's impossible, my mom shrieked. Shanika stared at me, open-mouthed. For the murder on Dr. Rolden and Isabella Upton, Luther continued. Dr. Rolden is dead? Shanika called out, bewildered. Like you don't know yet, Sanford spat at her. Luther started to read us our rights. Luther, we're no killers, you know that, I uttered. Policemen had come in to cuff me. They roughly turned me around and bent my arms behind my back with force. I yelped. We have witnesses, Sanford revealed. He grabbed Shanika by the hair and pulled her up. She screamed in pain. Hey, Luther shouted at him. This is unnecessary. They will come willingly. Sanford let her go reluctantly. Two policemen cuffed her and led her out. Then they moved me along. As I passed Sanford, I told him, If you touch her, I swear to God, I'm going to make you wish you were never born. Not really the words of an innocent man, are they? He snorted. Some neighbors had assembled in the street, curiously looking our way. We were put in different police vans and rode off. I had to wait before they took me out of the van after we parked in Novel Street. I wouldn't see Shanika till after this ordeal. They shoved me in the police station. Sanford was there already with a sarcastic glee on his face. But I saw somebody else I knew. The sad pale face of Myrtle Rolden gazed upon me. She was dressed in what I can only describe as a hippie dress. We're innocent, I told her. You have to believe us. We couldn't kill your father. She reached out for me, but the policeman pulled me away. I know, she nodded, and then turned to Sanford. Release them. They are not the murderers. Says the crazy witch, he retorted. Your word doesn't mean anything to me. She took a step in his direction. Her face went blank. A strange sensation filled the air. An electrifying effect. If you really think I'm a witch, she told him, maybe what you should do is be afraid of being cursed. She turned away from him and walked out. Meanwhile, they pushed me into one of the interrogation rooms. I gestured at them with my cuffed hands. The muscular, medium-height woman smirked. Can you at least put my hands in front of me, I asked. She looked at me. I don't know if she took pity on me, but she came to me and just did it. Thank you, I said as she left. 
a plain grey table stood in the middle of a small room. I sat on a single chair on one side, two others stood on the other. They let me brood in there for at least 20 minutes before they came in. I kept myself calm by singing songs in my head. Luther came in with Sanford, the latter feeling in control and being cocky about it. I want to know on what basis you guys arrested us, I asked. Luther came to sit on the opposite side of the table. Sanford just stood behind it. Your lover has already spilled the beans, he said. She's putting it all on you, so it's better you tell your version of the story. Of course, I couldn't know what Shanika had said, but I was sure she wouldn't confess to something we didn't do. That's the oldest trick in the book, I scoffed. I'm not going to fall for that. Besides, we are innocent. She's not going to confess. You said you had witnesses. Luther sighed. Several people saw you leave Dr. Rawdon's practice. Yeah, I confirmed. We went to talk to him. They were both alive when he left, though. Sanford banged his hands on the table. You killed him, he shouted. Confess! I was startled by this sudden outburst, but chose to ignore him. How were they killed, I wondered. Why don't you tell us, killer boy, Sanford? He panted. All the while, Luther was looking at me with an apologetic expression. Because I don't know, stupid ass cop, I countered. Sanford bent down, looking straight in my eyes. Listen to me, you pathetic excuse for a human. I know you killed him. You're probably responsible for the others too. And I'm gonna prove it and send you to the jail for the rest of your pitiful life. I was seething inside, thinking I was responsible for the deaths of Madeline and Laura. That was a step too far. I had to keep my cool though. What? I blurted out. Why would I do that? What motive would I have? His face went from menacing to murder mad in a split second. Maybe you can get it up until some blood flows. My mouth fell open in astonishment. Luther was simply speechless. Lawyer, I told Officer Law, I want a lawyer. You're gonna answer all my questions, monkey lover, he ragged. I put up my middle finger to him. Talk to the hand, motherfucker. He was ready to pounce on me. Even in the 80s, police brutality was a no-no, at least around our parts. I was bracing myself for the impact, but a knock on the door broke the tension. What? Sanford screamed. The brawny policewoman came in, hands clasped behind her back. We're going to have to let them go, sir. She suddenly smiled at me, then quickly looked back at Sanford. No, he screamed. We won't let murderers go. I understand, sir. She stayed calm and polite in the presence of her thundering chief. But the new witnesses, backed up by hard evidence, have established that Dr. Rolden was alive at least 15 minutes after Mr. Parker and Miss Jones left his practice. Sanford glanced at me, in total defeat. He still didn't relent, though. How? He called Henderson's laboratory, sir. She divulged. I showed my cuffs, theatrically. The policeman came towards me. Oh, no, I shook my head. He will release me. You don't have any control over me, Sanford Scott. I will do no such thing. For good measure, he crossed his arms across his chest. Oh, you'll do a lot more, I affirmed. You see, if you don't apologize to Chanika for pulling her hair, I'm going to make a formal complaint to your superiors, and I will not rest until the only thing you can do with your badge is wipe your ass. My rage showed, and I put my cuffed hands forward again. Now set me free. He reluctantly took the keys from the policewoman and took my cover up. We stepped out of the interrogation room. Shanika already stood in the narrow hallway. She ran at me to hug me. I hugged her back. I then turned to Sanford. I am sorry, he said, with no conviction whatsoever. I pulled your hair. She got in his face. You can be happy no woman of my complexion is taken seriously, she growled or I would have dragged you through the justice system and left you penniless in a gutter somewhere. I pulled her away. Remind me never to make you angry, I whispered at her. She smiled. As we passed the last officer, 
I saw the receptionist from the Henderson's laboratory being interviewed. At her side stood a tall, lean figure, about 50 years of age, balding. He happened to glance at me. His intense eyes seemed to penetrate me. I nodded at him, but he did not react. We were blinded by the light as we stepped out onto the sidewalk. We were immediately swarmed with bystanders, press, friends and our parents. Luther came out with a few policemen. Nothing to see here, he shouted. They dispersed the crowd and chased away the press. Are you okay, my mom asked, once we had a little space. We're fine, I assured. That's when I saw Mark and the rest of the gang standing a few meters away. I walked to them. How are you, I wondered. As good as I can be under the circumstances, he sighed. Shanika was hugging her parents. We brought your car, Dad informed. It's parked on the square. It took us some time to re reassure our parents, but soon we said our goodbyes, and they went home. We turned to walk to the main square. So that's um, a small part of the first story. The protagonist and his girlfriend being arrested for a, a murder. Um, now you got some idea um, of the style of the book. And that was all I wanted to show you. Thanks for watching. I'm hoping everything is okay with you and your family. And I'm hoping to see you again next week. Bye.